Premiership runners up last season and looking to make the knockouts for the second time and they look very strong already this season Gloucester Premiership semi-finalists last season they're playing fantastic rugby so far this season in the league can't wait to see what they do in Europe this time out Bath tournament winners back in 1998 looking to make the knockouts for the first time in five years and of course Northampton Harlequins and Sale all returning to Europe's top flight and they look well kitted out for that because all three clubs are playing brilliant rugby at the moment so really exciting to see them back in how about the Pro 14 clubs in the Heineken Champions Cup well we have of Johnny Sexton's Leinster course four time tournament winners and reigning Pro 14 champions Glasgow Pro 14 finalists last season got to a quarters last season looking to go beyond that this time out of course Munster Heineken Champions Cup semi-finalists for the past three seasons they often say you need a bit of heartbreak before you win this again will it be their season Ulster tournament winners back in 99 quarter finalists last season the first Irish province to actually win this tournament of course when they won it um, Benetton qualified by right for the Pro 14 Congratulations to them on that. Uh, playing some lovely rugby. Won four of their six games in the Challenge Cup pools last season, so they're well able for the Champions Cup, and it's really good to see them here. And then Connacht and the Ospreys all returning to Europe's top flight as well. As for the top 14 clubs in the Champions Cup, uh, well, Emile's uh, Toulouse, four-time champions, top 14 winners from last season in flying form. Their semi-final against Racing last year was just a sight to behold. Great to have them at the thick of the action again. Claremont, last season's Challenge Cup winners, back in the big time again. Lyon, who are currently flying high in the top 14. La Rochelle, uh, with Ronan O'Gara as head coach there, making it all the more interesting, of course. And uh, Racing 92, twice beaten finalists in the Heineken Champions Cup. Will it be their year? And Montpellier, always a threat. Very powerful squad, of course. Andre Pollard has joined them this season, making them even stronger. So there you have it, all 20 clubs in this season's tournament. Well, now let's just quickly run through the Heineken Champions Cup pools. And to remind you, the five pool winners and the three best runners-up qualify for the knockout stages. So if we take a look at pool one, you can see there Leinster, Northampton, Benetton and Lyon in pool two. We have Exeter Chiefs, Glasgow Warriors, Sail Sharks, and La Rochelle. In pool three, we've got Bath, Ulster, Harlequins, and Clermont. And not to be too dramatic, but it has been labelled the pool of death in pool four. Saracens, Munster, Racing 92, and the Ospreys. And in pool five, we have got Toulouse, Gloucester, Connacht, and Montpellier. So, if we take a look at the fixtures for round one, we've got Gloucester and Toulouse getting the ball rolling a week on Friday. Last season's beaten finalists, Leinster, are at home against Benetton. And then a week on Sunday, holders Saracens are up against Racing 92 in Paris in a repeat of that 2016 final. So we have another world-class Heineken Champions Cup lineup with seven previous tournament winners, Saracens, Northampton, Bath, Leinster, Munster, Ulster and of course Toulouse. And before we have a chat with our coaches and our players, could I ask please the WRU chairman Gareth Davis to come up and say a few words. Uh, as I'm on stage in the Principality Stadium, could I also add my congratulations to, uh, to the England and South Africa teams for getting to the final uh, and also to Wales for getting within three points of South Africa. Tongue in cheek, guys. Right? Okay. Uh, thank you to Simon, uh, and welcome to everybody to, as I say, the the home of, uh, of Welsh rugby. Uh, we're delighted to be hosting the 25th, 25th season launch of the Heineken Champions Cup, and it's great to have so many great names uh, from the rugby world here this this morning. Uh, it it doesn't seem like approaching 25 years, a uh, quarter of a century, uh, since that Cardiff and Toulouse contested uh, that inaugural final. Uh, but it was the 6th of January 1996 that that first final took place and we witnessed a, 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 a thrilling contest eventually won by Emile's team uh, two penalties in, in, in extra time uh, I recall uh, a bit of a disappointment for me I, I was actually chief executive of Cardiff at the time so a bit of a bitter blow in, in that first ever uh, Heineken Cup uh, we've also continued to celebrate some success on the European stage uh, in Wales. I think uh, we mentioned Cardiff Blues uh, lifting the Challenge Cup on a couple of occasions uh, in Bilbao a couple of years ago. But the first time they did was in, in Marseille, um, coincidentally, back in 2010. It's a, it's a great city. We've seen some, some clips of the, of the city today. And I'm sure that the 2020 uh, Heineken Champions Cup and Challenge Cup finals being played next May uh, will do justice to the magnificent Stade de Marseille Stadium. 
Uh, the recent Rugby World Cup in Japan, uh, as you've been mentioned already, has certainly uh, fueled the appetite, I think, for the season ahead. Um, and although feeling rather bleary-eyed this morning, having just got back on, on Monday evening, uh, there are already some fascinating clashes, as we've just seen uh, earlier on, on the, on the, um, on the screen. Uh, Forgive me again, the Welsh bias, I suppose, as you're in Cardiff, uh, uh, wishing the Ospreys the very best of luck as they take on first Munster, then Saracens, then Racing 92 in their bid for qualification. And the reason I mention that is just not being a, a parochial Welshman, but I think that highlights, I think, the sort of uh, uh, the, the, the competitive nature of the tournament that uh, uh, only one, probably only one of that group will actually uh, emerge from the group. So it, that speaks... Uh, speaks plenty, I think, for the uh, for the intensity of the competition. Of course, in on the Welsh team again, my uh, my my best wishes go to the Blues, Dragons, and the Scarlets in the Challenge Cup. And again, I mentioned the Challenge Cup because of the uh, I, I sort of was informed yesterday the, the the very positive news that the Welsh broadcaster SOC, which has been a fantastic supporter of uh, of rugby generally, but certainly rugby in Wales uh, for the last quarter of a century as well. That they'll be involved in the uh, in the broadcasting of the of the pool matches in, in the Challenge Cup, and I think that's uh, commendable. I think from the broadcaster BT's point of view, and also EPCR in terms of uh, facil facilitating that development. So thanks to EPCR and to, to, to Simon and to Vincent, the chief executive, uh, for choosing uh, this stadium for this year's launch. I think seven previous finals have been have been held in Cardiff. Two at the old National Stadium, five uh, in the current uh, Principality Stroke Millennium Stadium. I think they were the, they were in different guises uh, over the last 20 years or so. Um, I think we're very very proud of the stadium, as uh, as you can imagine, uh, and and much of its history and a lot of that history has been written on the European rugby stage. And we're grateful for you to be associated with the greatest of all club rugby competitions. Diachmar. Thanks, Gareth. Thank you so much. Um, okay, it's time to have a bit of a chat with uh, with our Heineken Champions Cup captains uh, and coaches. Uh, we're going to start with Pool 1 to guide us through it all. And uh, there's the pool for you. It's a decent pool, that, isn't it? Leinster, Northampton, Benetton and Lyon. Uh, Johnny, you're up first. So there you go. I'll give you that. Um, actually, before we talk about that pool, as we're here in Cardiff, uh, one of the most sensational games of rugby uh, most of us have ever seen, that final against Northampton Saints, and uh, your comeback in the second half. When you walk in here, you must have little rushes uh, remembering that moment, that day. My only memory of this stadium is losing to Wales, uh, last <laughs> Six Nations in the lash and rain. Uh, yeah, it was a special day uh, for the club uh, to sort of back up the 2009 win. Uh, and to come back against uh, the Saints, who we, we have again in our pool this year, who have, I think, turned the turned a big corner with their with their new coach and staff, and uh, are playing some brilliant rugby this year. Are you going to reveal what you actually said at halftime in the dressing room? Because I've heard many versions of it. No, uh, quoting Liverpool's comeback. No, that's no. not true. Uh, <laughs> I think a uh, lot was made about that because Brian spoke after the game and mentioned it. And if Brian says something, everyone thinks it's gospel <laughs> uh, which often isn't the case but uh, the, I think other people have spoken dressing room Leo's captain um, Josh Mid obviously um, and, and amongst others and there was uh, there wasn't too much wrong in the first half it's just a couple of things we needed to fix up and then once we did that it led to a, a great comeback yeah that's the beauty of this tournament though it kind of evokes passion you don't, you don't, you don't see all the time I mean it's special isn't it <laughs> yeah it does uh, you know for us in, in Ireland we grow up watching European Cup. It's uh, you know I obviously Leinster supporter, but grew up watching Munster have a lot of success and wanted to to emulate that with Leinster and uh, lucky to be a part of some some great teams to do that. Um, I guess you're you're carrying the, the the loss in the final last year still with you and you'll use that. What what changes have you made at Leinster? What are you looking to do differently this season to to, to win this thing? Uh, yeah, look, we look back at that game. With a few regrets, but they're a top quality team um, and they're going to be tough to beat. I think uh, we will take the hurt from that into this season. We haven't changed too much in terms of personnel. We've got some some other young lads coming through now through the academy system, which has produced so many good ones over the years. And uh, we're relying heavily on them again. We haven't made any signings as such for this season. So uh, it's the same group and hopefully that will drive us on to try and get to the final again. And just a word on, on coming back from a World Cup and, and uh, you know, everyone 
who was over there has different ex experiences of it. Uh, is it good just to get back into European competition and just kind of leave the disappointment over there and have another big goal? Yeah, I think we're all dying to get back into another game of rugby, really. Uh, you know, you want to get rid of the, the memories of the last one. I don't think they'll be gone that easy. It'll live with us for a long time, uh, how the World Cup finish for us. But, uh, yeah, just get back into a new competition now and uh, try and get that uh, fifth star that we've been that we've been chasing. OK, good talking. Thank you. you. Thanks for coming along today. Good stuff. Um, Marco Bortolami's here. Marco, how are you today? You well? Good, good, good. Uh, is the microphone on there? Give it a little tap there at the top and let's... There we go, we're in action. This is a competition you really want to prove yourself in. You've got close, but just not cl close enough, I, I guess, for what you know you're capable of. Yeah, we're really excited for this, this competition. Um, we, we didn't quite make it through the group last year. We came really close and uh, I think we're building nicely for a big couple of games coming up. If you, have you asked Johnny there, if you ask anyone from Munster, a lot of the teams here, they, they go through some big losses, they get close and there's big disappointments usually en route to winning it. It kind of seems like a rite of passage in this competition. Do you feel like you're at the end of that rite of passage? Is, it, is the time now? Well, obviously we hope so. Um, we haven't changed our squad too much this year. Obviously we signed Stuart Hogg, but um, I think we've learned a lot of lessons from last year. And uh, yeah, first up we've got La Rochelle, so it doesn't get much bigger. It certainly doesn't. What are the, what are the learnings, do you think, from the, your campaign so far? Um, I think you've got to win your home games first and foremost. We probably disappointed to slip up at home last year on one of the occasions and, uh, and then get what you can on the road. Um, but obviously you want to win all of them, but make sure Sunday Park's a bit of a powerhouse for us. It certainly is a difficult place to go and play. Uh, thanks for being here today. Good talking to you. Um, Dave Rennie of Glasgow. Very in recent years when it comes to Europe, but a strong season last year in the Prem. You must be looking forward to this one. Yeah, very much so. We've, um, we've been kind of to and fro between the Challenge and the Champions, so for us to get another opportunity to play there, we're extremely excited about. Similar to Stuart, we worked extremely hard last year to get there and, and for us to go to Clermont away for our first game. There are many better European club atmospheres to go and play and so one we're going to relish this year one we're going to give our our best opportunity to do as well as we can um, and challenge ourselves in the right way thanks very much chris let's uh, move our building again but we know that qualifying from this pool is going to be pretty tough yeah look i think we used last year as a bit of a, build, a building block obviously a few of the guys have alluded to it about um it's a massive honor to be included and work towards getting um, qualification for this tournament and i think as uh, someone else said as well, no pool is an easy no. pool. I think every team on their day has, has the ability to beat almost every other team. So that's what makes it so exciting. Thanks very much. I'm suggesting that no one else leans forward and tries to speak to me because someone's going to fall off the horse and I don't want any injuries at this stage. If we take a look.